moves in later today and we are really going to feel it tomorrow. Meteorologist Melissa Nord is in the Storm Tracker Center. Melissa, I think I'm going to go with burrow in. This is that's the first one I said. <laughs> it is certainly going to be the very cold air moving in. In fact, the coldest of the season. And if we make it down to 21 tomorrow morning, Kristen, the coldest that we've been in Atlanta since 2018 in January. So potentially the coldest in four years. And here's the big picture setup. Arctic blast going to become tumbling in here later on this afternoon as a coastal storm ramps up along the East Coast. So we'll miss out on that bomb cyclone and big blizzard, but what we are going to get is the cold air. So as decent as today is right now, but we have some clouds and some spotty showers by tomorrow morning. This is what you got to prepare for feels like temperatures that will be down in the single digits and for the North Georgia mountains where there's a wind chill advisory. Those feels like temperatures will be between about five degrees below zero and five degrees above zero. So very cold tomorrow morning up in the North Georgia mountains and in and around the metro area. Those wind chills what it feels like if you were to step outside is between about 5 and 15 degrees. But before we get there, we got to track a couple of isolated, very light showers that will be moving through. And for the mountains, these will be a couple of snow showers as well. Let me take it to the next few hours, hour by hour on our forecast track, the transition from just cool to very cold outside. And here's the next few hours. You notice there could be a couple of isolated spotty showers. The rain chance today only about a 20%. But as we head into 4 o'clock this afternoon, the winds will start to be picking up from the northwest and that will be ushering in this big drop off in those temperatures. So by 7 o'clock tonight, we're dropping down through the 30s, couple of flurries or light snow showers in the mountains, maybe even a flurry or two on the north side of town. And then as we roll through the overnight, those temperatures plummet to the low 20s in Atlanta. So we'll have the clouds sticking around that 20% rain chance. Then those wind chills, which are in blue right here, you see how they drop very quickly by 5 o'clock down into the 30s and into the 20s by 9 o'clock. Coming up, we'll walk through the weekend forecast, talk about when we'll finally start to see a little rebound in those temperatures. Talk about what it means also for your house, the low humidity in your house tomorrow. That part of my forecast coming up. Kristen. Oh, Melissa, looking forward to that. Well, after years of not having any answers, a Georgia family is finally getting justice. Today on Midday, we are talking to the family of a grandmother and two children who were killed while a man was fleeing from police in 2016. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter spoke to their loved ones, and she has our story. I spoke with Joy, whose mother and only two children were killed as a result of that police chase. And she says that while she's glad police have finally made an arrest, that doesn't change that her family's lives were taken away. It's, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. You know, you can't bring your family back, but to know that he's not out there doing it to hurt someone else, I'm happy about that. The man accused of crashing into Patrick's family's vehicle and killing them faced a judge for the first time yesterday. Police arrested DeAndre Tigner on December 23rd. The family and the family's attorney say authorities told them he was caught following a high speed chase. And when they captured him, they matched his DNA to the incident from 2016, where he was allegedly fleeing from officers after stealing a car. He is now facing felony murder charges as well as a reckless driving hit and run charge. Patrick tells me that she begged this man to come forward for the last six years. I was also able to speak with the father of one of the children who was killed. I'll have more from our conversation coming up tonight at 5. In Atlanta, Brittany Klein, Peter, 11 Alive News. And police are calling a shooting outside a Midtown Atlanta nightclub a drive by. A man and woman were shot multiple times while leaving the nightclub near Crescent Street and 12th Street. They were brought to the hospital and they are stable. Police believe the man was involved in an altercation inside the club that led to the shooting. Atlanta police also investigating the shooting of a good Samaritan who tried to stop a car break in. Police tell us two people were sitting in their car when they noticed someone trying to break into the car next to them. Police say the man was shot when he went out to confront the thieves. Police say the suspects ran away after taking some items out of the car. The victim was taken to Grady Hospital and is stable. Nationwide new COVID infections are winding down, but there is a new variant catching the attention of health experts. Liza Lucas breaks down what we know about what's considered a spinoff of the Omicron strain.
experts on watch, pushing to learn more about a spinoff of the Omicron variant. It's called BA.2, and it's gaining ground in some European countries. The variant's also been detected in at least 17 states in the U.S., though only in a very small percentage of cases. Among the questions, is it more contagious? Early data suggests the subvariant could be a little more contagious than original Omicron, given it's already dominant in countries like Denmark. So does it cause more severe illness? So far, there is no evidence suggesting that. That, but it may be too soon to tell. Bottom line, we're keeping a very close eye on it. Looks a bit more transmissible, but not necessarily more severe. What about vaccines? Are they effective against the new subvariant? Again, more research is needed, but early reports show that vaccines are roughly as effective against BA.2 as they are against original Omicron. And as SARS-CoV-2 variants continue to change over time, experts maintain it's critical to keep promoting vaccination efforts in order to protect those most vulnerable. Our immune systems are really smart and uh, vaccination just makes them smarter than ever. So we've got to keep going in that direction. And in the fight against COVID-19, researchers are looking into a blood test that could eventually help them determine a person's risk for long-term effects. A woman tells us she is still feeling the effects of COVID-19 after being one of the very first to contract the virus in March of 2020. Once or twice, a week, I'll wake up and feel like this really weird surge or like internal vibrations in my chest area. Um, my lips will kind of vibrate or tingle when I eat certain foods. Lisa O'Brien says she occasionally still feels fatigued, but she's no longer losing clumps of hair or experiencing drastic fluctuations in her heart rate. New research finds people who develop long COVID have lower levels of certain antibodies in their blood shortly after infection. In a study done over a year, researchers watched the symptoms people had after being infected and tried to predict from their immune responses who would develop post COVID symptoms. They say this could help with long haul treatments. You can target potentially therapies earlier or identify those patients for research long term. Um, so I think that's how this could potentially help if it was validated. And it could potentially enable scientists to develop a blood test to figure out the why behind long haul symptoms. Dr. Brown says about 30% of those with COVID-19 could experience persistent symptoms. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has officially announced his retirement and President Joe Biden confirms he will make good on a campaign promise to nominate a black woman for the Supreme Court. Joe Hinkie has more on a Georgian with a familiar last name who is reportedly on the short list. Justice Leslie Abrams Gardner is Stacey Abrams' sister, but based on her own merits, she is qualified to sit on the U.S. Supreme Court. But I'm told those merits stacked up against other potential nominees makes it unlikely that she'll be picked. Former federal prosecutor Leslie Abrams Gardner is seen in this 2014 C-SPAN video when she was confirmed to serve on the bench of the U.S. District Court for Middle Georgia, a position she still holds. Justice Gardner is now being put on several short lists in national publications as a potential Supreme Court nominee. The Abrams name, of course, brings with it political baggage, at least in Georgia. We need to judge Judge Gardner in her own right and separate her from her sister. Love and Alive political um, analyst Andra Gillespie says while well, Judge Gardner might often be linked to her sister Stacey Abrams, who's the sole Democrat running for governor in this year's race, she's qualified based on her own accomplishments to be considered as a Supreme Court nominee. Other possible picks, though, such as Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, a rumored frontrunner, have more experience, typical of a Supreme Court justice, including an appeals courts, particular the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, the second highest court in the country. Probably isn't Judge Gardner's moment on the merits. And so the fact that she's related to Stacey Abrams, I don't think is necessarily an issue in this particular case. And a new AJC poll gives us a look at who is leading in the race for governor. If the election came down to Governor Brian Kemp and Democrat Stacey Abrams, voters preferred Kemp over Abrams 48 percent to 41 percent. If former Senator David Perdue won the Republican primary, voters preferred him over Abrams 47 percent to 43 percent. This poll was conducted by the University of Georgia School of Public and International Affairs involving 872 registered voters. Well, tax season is here, but issues related to the pandemic could delay your refund. We're telling you why filing a paper return may be a bad idea. That's next.
News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. It's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. That's what makes 11 Alive News different. We verify, and we're the only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Whether you're heading to school or the office, walk out the door prepared. 11 Alive Morning News gives you breaking news and perspective on the day ahead. From sunny skies to severe weather, know what to expect and what to wear. And while I can't stop traffic, I can certainly help save you some time and frustration. If you haven't watched the 11 Live Morning News lately, see the difference. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news wherever you are, safely snap it and share it with us using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. All right, look at this video of breaking news a viewer just sent us. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. Life moves fast in Metro Atlanta. So does the news. Watch 11 Alive News at 11. You'll get breaking news and you'll get it fast. See stories and perspectives on the issues affecting you. Whether it's sunny skies or severe weather, feel confident you've got an accurate forecast for tomorrow. And we verify whether viral stories are fact or fiction. No one else does that. If you haven't watched 11 Alive News lately, see the difference. Watch 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Want to verify whether something's true or false? Do parents have... Welcome back to 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. Have something you want verified? Email us at verify at 11alive.com. The IRS began accepting 2021 tax returns Monday, and Brandon Lewis from our Verify team explains why you should consider filing electronically this year. The IRS began accepting 2021 tax returns on January 24th. But the agency is still trying to finish millions of 2020 taxes. Many of them are paper returns, which are taking months to process. And as Americans get ready to file their taxes, a top Google search trend is the question, how long is it taking the IRS to process paper returns? So let's verify. Are you more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically? Our sources are the IRS, accounting firm Keystone CPAs, and national taxpayer advocate Aaron Collins, an independent ombudsman within the Department of Treasury. Last summer, Collins's office found the average paper return took about twice as long to process compared to an electronic return. In her annual report to Congress this January, she said the IRS was excruciatingly slow at processing some paper returns. She found some cases where it took weeks just to open an envelope and up to eight months for paper filers to get their refund. Meanwhile, electronic returns begin processing within a few hours, and most taxpayers receive their refund in a few weeks. The Advocate's Office blames multiple factors for the backlog, like Congress requiring the IRS to divert resources to COVID-19-related issues, including the processing of stimulus checks. Keystone CPAs recommend its clients file electronically and encourage them to use direct deposit to receive their refund even quicker. So, it's true, you are more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically. Of course, that's not possible for all individuals or businesses, such as returns that require attaching lengthy documentation. So outside right now, we're in the 40s. We've got lots of clouds around, but the big picture is the colder air coming in. And this is on the back side of a very strong developing low pressure system, which is really going to crank out some impressive snowfall all on the 95 corridor. But for us, we just don't get a lot of snow out of this. In fact, for the metro, we're not going to see snow. Those highest elevations of the mountains, maybe a coating to half an inch or so in those highest peaks. 
Let me show you the big picture of those snowfall amounts the next seven days. Locally, they could be talking about two plus feet of snow and there are blizzard warnings in effect all the way from the coast of Delmarva all the way up through the Boston area. So some impressive snow amounts going to be coming out there, but for us it is all about the cold. So how cold is it going to be? Well, tomorrow morning in the North Georgia mountains all the way down to Cherokee County, we've got a wind chill advisory. So those feels like temperatures could be between 10 below zero, which I think it'll be just those highest peaks below zero and as much as five degrees tomorrow morning. So, you know, we don't get this cold very often in the winter. It happens once or so every year for us to see the temps this low, but the wind chills, we haven't had one of these wind chill advisories in several years. So what's most important to remember tomorrow morning is just to limit your time outdoors until we get into the afternoon. Your exposed skin, if you've got to be out walking the dog or if you have to work outside in the cold tomorrow morning, cover your exposed skin in with wind chills this low frostbite can set in in just 30 to 45 minutes if you have exposed skin out there. So let's talk a little bit more about Atlanta where the wind chill tomorrow morning could be between about 5 and 10 degrees. The low temperature forecast is 21. That would be our coldest in about four years since January 2018. You notice it's very cold again Sunday morning, but the feels like temperature is not quite as low. So we'll lose those really strong winds as we go into tomorrow afternoon. And after that, we should see light winds into Sunday, and that will help to keep the feels like temperatures much closer to what the actual temperatures will be outside. So no doubt about it, it's going to be cold. It's not just cold, though. It's also very dry air that we have, and this is going to be a playing an impact on you, whether you're going to be outside or inside. And I want to talk about this a little bit more because very dry Arctic air is moving in. We talk about humidity levels, right? The dew point is the most pure measure of how humid or dry the air is. When it's going to be this low as it is tomorrow, your furnace, your heater is working on overdrive to keep your house warm. Well, the inside relative humidity, what it, the percent of humidity is inside your house will be dropping down between five and 10%. That's really low. What's ideal is between 30 to 50%. So you're going to notice more static electricity. You're going to notice a lot of dry skin. So what you can do right now to combat the dry air coming in, run a humidifier. If you don't have one, put some bowls of water outside in your house around different rooms. Stay hydrated. Same thing with being on an airplane. That dry air will get to you and moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Luckily, it is just tomorrow with the brunt of that dry air. Now outside right now, we've got cloudy skies. We're in the mid 40s at the moment. There could be a couple of isolated showers out there this afternoon, but the cold air will come in as we head into the evening. So those few snow showers in the mountains for us in the metro, just a stray shower out there through the evening, but then the cold air settles in overnight. So tomorrow morning, those feels like temperatures between about 5 and 15 degrees over the metro. We will start off with the temperatures in the low 20s. You notice by lunchtime, even though we have sunshine, we're still below freezing, feeling like it's in the tens, the teens tomorrow at lunchtime, and then into the afternoon, we'll be stuck in the 30s, feeling like it's in the 20s, but those winds should start to lax as we head past lunchtime tomorrow. So there is a wind chill advisory again tonight up in the north Georgia mountains and a wind advisory as well. It will start to gust as we head into t uh, this evening as the temperatures fall down. Here's our seven day forecast. Sunday is cold as well in the morning, but in the afternoon we will rebound to around 50 degrees, warming up to the 60s early next week. But then rain chances coming back in as we uh, have Groundhog Day. 40% rain chance and a 50% chance of showers and maybe even an isolated rumble of thunder next Thursday. Live news at 11. You'll get breaking news and you'll get it fast. See stories and perspectives on the issues affecting you. Whether it's sunny skies or severe weather, feel confident you've got an accurate forecast for tomorrow. And we verify whether viral stories are fact or fiction. No one else does that. If you haven't watched 11 Alive News lately, see the difference. Watch 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Want to verify whether something's true or false? Do parents have the right to see their child's medical records? Now you can ask us using the Near Me feature of the 11 Alive News app. Just record your question, send it to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We began with breaking news this and watch on demand. We're tracking severe weather moving through the metro area. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. When it comes to weather, all you want to know is, how is it going to affect my day? 
When you watch 11 Alive Storm Trackers, we focus on the next 24 hours so that you can plan your day. And when it comes to severe weather, we're live instantly, keeping you up to date and keeping your family safe. Accuracy and safety are everything. We want you to be ready for anything. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Storm Trackers lately, see the difference every day on 11 Alive News. The next time you see severe weather, safely snap it and share it with 11 Alive News using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Here's a photo of the storm that a viewer sent to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. It's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. That's what makes 11 Alive News different. We verify, and we're the only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Whether you're heading to school or the office, walk out the door prepared. 11 Alive Morning News gives you breaking news and perspective on the day ahead. From sunny skies to severe weather, know what to expect and what to wear. And while I can't stop traffic, I can certainly help save you some time. And We're taking a look at a history making moment in our Voices for Equality series. Two Atlanta City Council members have accomplished something that has never been done in the United States. Here's Joe Ripley tonight on the cultural milestone and what it means for the city of Atlanta. Amir Faroqi's roots could not be closer to Atlanta and they couldn't be farther from it. I'm the child of on one hand, an eighth generation Georgian. One side of my family goes back to the 1700s here in Georgia. And then I'm also the, the child of an Iranian immigrant who came to the U.S. in the late 1960s. Faroqi's father, a political science professor, planted the seeds of public service and becoming a lifelong learner. Think about uh, folks in need and the least of us and how we can, can help each other be successful. Um, I think he's put a premium on education in my life. In 2017, Faroqi became the first Iranian-American elected official in the South, winning the seat for Atlanta City Council District 2. Georgia is uh, as much a melting pot as my, my parents' relationship reflected, right? I think we have enormous diversity, enormous history uh, from all types of races and ethnic groups. Atlanta City Council continues to make history. In November, Liliana Bakhtiari was elected as city councilwoman for District 5, making Atlanta City Council the only current city council in America with two Iranian-Americans. I was told that I was what was wrong with this country on multiple occasions, that people like people like my family needed to go back to where they came from. It's, it's incredible that my identity finally gets it feels validated, and I get to talk about that, and I get to talk about my family's history and that legacy and everything that was sacrificed to get me here. Bakhtiari's father immigrated from Iran in the 80s, instilling a conviction to fight for what she believed in. Don't ever preach to anyone about what they should believe or how they should live their life. You can respectfully disagree. Always listen. Humanity happens when you listen. And he's always taught me that when your friends fall, you help them up. Two city leaders shaped by their heritage, fueled by their desire to move Atlanta forward. I'm here to, to connect folks, to humanize issues, and to lay the groundwork for other people like me to follow afterwards. To read more about this story and others that empower diverse voices in our community, just head to 11alive.com slash voices. Next, the new developments in the case surrounding a Wendy's that burned to the ground after a night of social justice unrest in Atlanta. The charges three people now face. Dream now on Roku. It's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. That's what makes 11 Alive News different. We verify, and we're the only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. 
a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Whether you're heading to school or the office, Walk out the door prepared. 11 Alive Morning News gives you breaking news and perspective on the day ahead. From sunny skies to severe weather, know what to expect and what to wear. And while I can't stop traffic, I can certainly help save you some time and frustration. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Morning News lately, see the difference. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news wherever you are, safely snap it and share it with us using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. All right, look at this video of breaking news a viewer just sent us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. Life moves fast in Metro Atlanta. So does the news. Watch 11 Alive News at 11. You'll get breaking news and you'll get it fast. See stories and perspectives on the issues affecting you. Whether it's sunny skies or severe weather, feel confident you've got an accurate forecast for tomorrow. And we verify whether viral stories are fact or fiction. No one else does that. If you haven't watched 11 Alive News lately, see the difference. Watch 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Want to verify whether something's true or false? Do parents have the right to see their child's medical records? Now you can ask us using the Near Me feature of the 11 Alive News app. Just record your question, send it to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We begin with breaking news this and watch on demand. We're tracking severe weather moving through the metro area. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. When it comes to weather, all you want to know is, how is it going to affect my day? When you watch 11 Alive Storm Trackers, we focus on the next 24 hours so that you can plan your day. And when it comes to severe weather, we're live instantly, keeping you up to date and keeping your family safe. Accuracy and safety are everything. We want you to be ready for anything. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Storm Trackers lately, see the difference every day on 11 Alive News. Three people now face criminal charges for their suspected roles in an arson fire at the Wendy's where Rayshard Brooks was killed. It happened during the protests of June 2020, and these charges are a long time coming. John Shirek has the latest on the investigation. The Wendy's on University Avenue, burning to the ground, live on social media. From the first small flames to the end, witnesses were unknowingly already helping arson investigators by posting on social media video after video of potential suspects. Look at a white girl trying to burn down a Wendy's. And soon after, police arrested three people. Now all three have been indicted by a Fulton County grand jury on arson charges. Natalie White, John Wade, and Chisholm Kingston. Video shows you not only Natalie, but the scores of other people that were involved. That's Natalie White's attorney, Drew Findling, back in June of 2020, insisting White was part of the protest but did not help set the fire. Protesters angry about a confrontation in the Wendy's parking lot the night before between a white Atlanta police officer and a black DUI suspect, Rayshard Brooks, that ended with the officer shooting and killing Brooks. As it turns out, moments before the shooting, a police body cam recorded Brooks mentioning Natalie White. Natalie White, she's my girlfriend. White's attorney, Findling, said no. White was just a good friend and not an arsonist protesting Brooks' death. Now the grand jury indictment says all three worked together Together, conspired with each other. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis telling us she recognizes the right to protest, but will not tolerate violence like arson endangering lives. Investigators said from the beginning they expected to make more arrests. These are the only three suspects arrested and now indicted so far. In Atlanta, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. For more on the investigation and what could be next at the site where the Wendy's once stood, Head on over to 11alive.com. You're watching 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. Well, it is going to be a chilly one this weekend. You may want to hunker down and bundle <laughs> up, Melissa, because we are talking about 20 degrees, but it may even feel colder than that in the morning. Much colder. Yeah, the wind chills, the feels like temperatures will be in the single digits in Atlanta and then for the mountains as low as some sub zero readings. So in the negatives, but here's the big picture. The Arctic blast going to be surging south 
overnight tonight. It's not here quite yet, but let me show you what it's going to feel like tomorrow morning. Our average low temperature this time of year is 37. We're going to be down to 21 tomorrow morning. That's more than 15 degrees below average, and it will feel like it's between about 5 and 10 right around the perimeter tomorrow morning. So it'll be the coldest air of the season, and if we do make it down to that 21, it'll be the coldest that we've been since 2018, so about four years ago. Now, it'll be even colder up in the North Georgia Mountains. I want to show you this wind chill advisory where it could feel like as low as 10 degrees below zero in those highest elevations. So, you know, tomorrow morning, what you need to take away from this is it's going to be cold, it's going to be gusty, so limit your time outdoors. And if you do have to be out briefly, whether it be working or taking the dog on a walk, cover exposed skin. Tomorrow is not a day you want to step outside without some gloves on and a hat. So very cold air is going to be incoming again between about 5 and 10 degrees around the inner metro is what it's going to feel like. And in those North Georgia mountains, there will be a few sub zero readings tomorrow morning. You wouldn't know it looking outside right now. We're in the 40s. We've got cloudy skies and these clouds are stubborn. Now this is all ahead of our Arctic blast that's going to roll in later on this evening. And we're in the 40s, even up in far North Georgia. So the front has not arrived here yet. So even though we have the clouds, you can enjoy a couple of milder hour, uh, hours outside this afternoon. There will be a few spotty, very light showers possible into this evening. A lot of is what you're seeing right now and radar is not actually reaching the ground, but what will start to move in here is that drop in temperatures this evening and overnight. So next 12 hours for us we will still make it to around 50 this afternoon. Then once we head to about four or five o'clock, you'll notice the winds picking up and the temperatures falling pretty quickly into the overnight coming up. I'll walk you through the weekend hour by hour when those feels like temperatures rebound back above freezing and even when we'll be back in the 50s and 60s. That forecast is ahead. Kristen. I want to go grocery shopping now instead of waiting till tomorrow. Well, after years of not having any answers, a Georgia family is finally getting justice. Today on Midday, we're talking to the family of a grandmother and two children who were killed while a man was fleeing from police in 2016. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter spoke to their loved ones and has their story. I spoke with Joy, whose mother and only two children were killed as a result of that police chase. And she says that while she's glad police have finally made an arrest, that doesn't change that her family's lives were taken away. It's, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. You know, you can't bring your family back, but to know that he's not out there doing it to hurt someone else, I'm happy about that. The man accused of crashing into Patrick's family's vehicle and killing them faced a judge for the first time yesterday. Police arrested DeAndre Tigner on December 23rd. The family and the family's attorney say authorities told them he was caught following a high speed chase. And when they captured him, they matched his DNA to the incident from 2016, where he was allegedly fleeing from officers after stealing a car. He is now facing felony murder charges as well as a reckless driving hit and run charge. Patrick tells me that she begged this man to come forward for the last six years. I was also able to speak with the father of one of the children who was killed. I'll have more from our conversation coming up tonight at 5. In Atlanta, Brittany Kleinpeter, 11 Alive News. And police are calling a shooting outside a Midtown Atlanta nightclub a drive by. A man and woman were shot multiple times while leaving that nightclub near Crescent Avenue and 12th Street. They were brought to the hospital and are stable. Police believe the man was involved in an altercation inside the club that led to the shooting. And Atlanta police also investigating the shooting of a good Samaritan who tried to stop a car break in. Police tell us two people were sitting in their car when they noticed someone trying to break into the car next to them. Police say the man was shot when he got out to confront the thieves. Police say the suspects ran away after taking some of the items out of the car. The victim was taken to Grady Hospital in and is stable. Nationwide new COVID infections are winding down, but there is a new variant catching the attention of health experts. Liza Lucas breaks down what we know about what is considered a spinoff of the Omicron strain. Experts on watch, pushing to learn more about a spinoff of the Omicron variant. It's called BA.2 and it's gaining ground in some European countries. The variant's also been detected in at least 17 states in the U.S., though only in a very small percentage of cases. Among the questions, is it more contagious? Early data suggests the subvariant could be a little more contagious than original Omicron, given it's already dominant in countries like Denmark. So does it cause more severe illness? So far, there is no evidence suggesting that. 
that, but it may be too soon to tell. Bottom line, we're keeping a very close eye on it. Looks a bit more transmissible, but not necessarily more severe. What about vaccines? Are they effective against the new subvariant? Again, more research is needed, but early reports show that vaccines are roughly as effective against BA.2 as they are against original Omicron. And as SARS-CoV-2 variants continue to change over time, experts maintain it's critical to keep promoting vaccination efforts in order to protect those most vulnerable. Our immune systems are really smart and uh, vaccination just makes them smarter than ever. So we've got to keep going in that direction. And in the fight against COVID-19, researchers are looking into a blood test that could eventually help them determine a person's risk for long-term effects. A woman tells us she is still feeling the effects of COVID after being one of the first to contract the virus in March of 2020. Once or twice, a week, I'll wake up and feel like this really weird surge or like internal vibrations in my chest area. Um, my lips will kind of vibrate or tingle when I eat certain foods. Oh, sounds awful. Lisa O'Brien says she occasionally still feels fatigued, but look at this. She's no longer losing clumps of hair or experiencing drastic fluctuations in her heart. Thank goodness. New research finds people who develop long COVID have lower levels of certain antibodies in their blood shortly after infection. In a study done over a year, researchers watched the symptoms people had after being infected and tried to predict from their immune responses who would develop post COVID symptoms. They say this could help with long haul treatments. You can target potentially therapies earlier or identify those patients for research long term. Um, so I think that's how this could potentially help if it was validated. This also could potentially enable scientists to develop a blood test to figure out the why behind long haul symptoms. Dr. Brown says about 30% of those with COVID-19 could experience persistent symptoms. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has officially announced his retirement and President Joe Biden confirms he will make good on a promise in his campaign to nominate a black woman for the Supreme Court. Joe Henke has more on a Georgian with a familiar last name who is reportedly on the short list. Justice Leslie Abrams Gardner is Stacey Abrams' sister, but based on her own merits, she is qualified to sit on the U.S. Supreme Court. But I'm told those merits stacked up against other potential nominees makes it unlikely that she'll be picked. Former federal prosecutor Leslie Abrams Gardner is seen in this 2014 C-SPAN video when she was confirmed to serve on the bench of the U.S. District Court for Middle Georgia, a position she still holds. Justice Gardner is now being put on several short lists in national publications as a potential Supreme Court nominee. The Abrams name, of course, brings with it political baggage, at least in Georgia. We need to judge Judge Gardner in her own right and separate her from her sister. 11 Alive political analyst Andra Gillespie says while well, Judge Gardner might often be linked to her sister Stacey Abrams, who's the sole Democrat running for governor in this year's race, she's qualified based on her own accomplishments to be considered as a Supreme Court nominee. Other possible picks, though, such as Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, a rumored frontrunner, have more experience typical of a Supreme Court justice, including an appeals courts, particularly the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, the second highest court in the country. Probably isn't Judge Gardner's moment on the merits. And so the fact that she's related to Stacey Abrams, I don't think is necessarily an issue in this particular case. And a new AJC poll gives us a look at who is leading in the race for Georgia governor. If the election came down to Governor Brian Kemp and Democrat Stacey Abrams, voters preferred, preferred Governor Kemp over Abrams 48 percent to 41 percent. A former Senator David Perdue won the Republican primary. Well, voters still prefer him over Abrams 47 percent to 43 percent. That poll conducted by the University of Georgia School of Public and International Affairs it involved 872 registered voters. Tax season is here, but issues related to the pandemic could delay your refund. We're telling you why filing a paper return may be a bad idea. Next. Can't stop traffic. I can certainly help save you some time and frustration. If you haven't watched the 11 Live Morning News lately, See the difference. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news wherever you are, safely snap it and share it with us using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. All right, look at this video of breaking news a viewer just sent us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. 
Life moves fast in Metro Atlanta. So does the news. Watch 11 Alive News at 11. You'll get breaking news and you'll get it fast. See stories and perspectives on the issues affecting you. Whether it's sunny skies or severe weather, feel confident you've got an accurate forecast for tomorrow. And we verify whether viral stories are fact or fiction. No one else does that. If you haven't watched 11 Alive News lately, see the difference. Watch 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Want to verify whether something's true or false? Do parents have the right to see their child's medical records? Now you can ask us using the Near Me feature of the 11 Alive News app. Just record your question, send it to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We began with breaking news this and watch on demand. We're tracking severe weather moving through the metro area. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. When it comes to weather, all you want to know is, how is it going to affect my day? When you watch 11 Alive Storm Trackers, we focus on the next 24 hours so that you can plan your day. And when it comes to severe weather, we're live instantly, keeping you up to date and keeping your family safe. Accuracy and safety are everything. We want you to be ready for anything. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Storm Trackers lately, see the difference every day on 11 Alive News. The next time you see severe weather, safely snap it and share it with 11 Alive News using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Here's a photo of the storm that a viewer sent to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. It's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. Welcome back to 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. Have a question you want to answer? Text us at 404-885-7600. It's that time of year. The IRS began accepting 2021 tax returns on Monday. Brandon Lewis from our Verify team explains why you should consider filing electronically this year. The IRS began accepting 2021 tax returns on January 24th, but the agency is still trying to finish millions of 2020 taxes. Many of them are paper returns, which are taking months to process. And as Americans get ready to file their taxes, the top Google search trend is the question, how long is it taking the IRS to process paper returns? So let's verify. Are you more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically? Our sources are the IRS, accounting firm Keystone CPAs, and national taxpayer advocate Aaron Collins, an independent ombudsman within the Department of Treasury. Last summer, Collins's office found the average paper return took about twice as long to process compared to an electronic return. In her annual report to Congress this January, she said the IRS was excruciatingly slow at processing some paper returns. She found some cases where it took weeks just to open an envelope and up to eight months for paper filers to get their refund. Meanwhile, electronic returns begin processing within a few hours, and most taxpayers receive their refund in a few weeks. The Advocate's Office blames multiple factors for the backlog, like Congress requiring the IRS to divert resources to COVID-19-related issues, including the processing of stimulus checks. Keystone CPAs recommend its clients file electronically and encourage them to use direct deposit to receive their refund even quicker. So it's true, you are more likely to receive your refund faster if you file your 2021 tax return electronically. Of course, that's not possible for all individuals or businesses, such as returns that require attaching lengthy documentation. So the coldest air of the season heading in here for tomorrow and for Sunday morning. So very cold, dense Arctic air. And I want to show you the big picture where we'll be tomorrow morning with our low temperatures. The jet stream taking a big dive south. So all that cold air that's been bundled up in northern Canada and Alaska 
it is allowing it to uh, surge south that jet stream that's going south as well. So we'll be down to 22 here in Atlanta tomorrow morning, and this cold air is not just going to be cold, but it's also going to be dry. So you will notice tomorrow if you don't run a humidifier today, especially you're going to notice the static in your house tomorrow. If you go to open the doorknob after maybe sitting on the couch with a warm blanket, you're going to notice shocking your neighbor or your family friend. Uh, so run a humidifier. That's one way to combat the really dry air that's going to be in your house. And if you don't have a humidifier, you can put some bowls of water out, little, leave a little water in the sink, but there will be very dry air tomorrow. You'll also want to moisturize and drink lots of water. Don't forget with these cold temperatures to bring the pets in. Even those of you who might have outdoor cats, outdoor dogs, at least bring them in the garage. Give them a little shelter tonight with these cold wind chills. Now, in terms of preparing your house, I don't think for the metro this is widespread pipe bursting cold, but for any exposed pipes outdoors, you want to maybe insulate them with a blanket or if you have any pipe coverings, you can put on them some foam insulation there. And then for far north Georgia, if you're in the wind chill advisory, which I'm going to show you in a second, you can leave your cabinet doors underneath your sink open tonight. A little slow drip on the faucets. Not a bad idea to help prevent any of those pipes from freezing overnight. So again, the coldest air of the season, potentially the coldest in four years, but really the last few winters have been relatively mild for us in North Georgia, all things considered. So tomorrow morning we'll be down to 21 in Atlanta. Feels like temperature between about 5 and 10 degrees. For Sunday, you notice the feels like temperature and the low temperature much closer to each other. So we'll lose that strong wind factor as we get into late tomorrow. So Sunday morning will feel very close to what the actual temperatures will be outside. But where will we feel tomorrow morning? Well, in the North Georgia mountains, it could feel like it's between five degrees below zero and about five degrees above zero. So Blairsville, Blue Ridge up towards Clayton. Best to limit your time outdoors tomorrow morning. Bundle up in lots of layers and don't forget to cover your hands and your head. In and around the metro between about 5 and 15. This is first thing tomorrow morning, but as we head into the afternoon, those wind chills, once the winds start to calm down, will climb back up into the 20s. So where it'll be the coldest, we have a wind chill advisory. That also extends all the way down to Cherokee County as well. So could be feeling like it's below 5 degrees in Cherokee County tomorrow morning. So let's kind of go through the day planner. Morning time, limit time outdoors. OK, we'll start off in the morning. Those low 20s in the city, some teens in those outlying suburbs, but the winds will still be gusting about 25 to 30 miles per hour around the metro. So that'll make it feel like it is in the single digit territory. By lunchtime, even though there's bright sunshine tomorrow, we're still dealing with the wind chill factor to feel like it's in the mid to upper teens around lunchtime. Then as we head into the afternoon, those feels like temperatures climbing back up into the 20s, but our temperature with that cold Arctic air in place, they're going to be stuck in the 30s tomorrow afternoon. I don't expect them to climb up into the 40s for Atlanta. Outside right now, the Arctic air has not arrived yet, but we're stuck with these cloudy skies. Yes, it's a little gloomy looking out there, but at least the temperatures not too bad, all things considered. We're at 46 in Atlanta at our lunchtime. We should make it to around 50 this afternoon. Winds right now are just out of the west about 5 to 10 miles per hour. But once we get into this evening, getting off work, Friday night plans, you'll start to notice the winds really starting to pick up and that will drive in the colder air. Satellite and radar, here's the clouds. Most of this green you're seeing on the map not actually reaching the ground, but I've got about a 20% chance this afternoon there could be a stray shower here or there around the metro. And then in the North Georgia mountains, we'll track those snow flurries with again little snow accumulation. So next 12 hours for us. Arctic front rolls on through here by late afternoon. Then we start to see the temperatures beginning to drop. So by tomorrow morning, we have those feels like temperatures in the single digits. As I mentioned, Sunday morning, we don't have as much the wind chill factor. We should be feeling like the teens to low 20s. And then in the afternoon, we'll see those temperatures climbing back up to around 50. So it's a very short lived cold snap for us, but cold it will be. Sunshine tomorrow, 37 degrees. But again, prepare for those cold wind chills in the morning by Sunday afternoon after the cold start. We warm back up to 50 degrees. You notice the warming trend continues into early next week. Then rain chances return. We'll bring back some showers Wednesday and a little better chance of rain on Thursday. There's more news coming up right after this. Only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. 
mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Whether you're heading to school or the office, walk out the door prepared. 11 Alive Morning News gives you breaking news and perspective on the day ahead. From sunny skies to severe weather, know what to expect and what to wear. And while I can't stop traffic, I can certainly help save you some time and frustration. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Morning News lately, see the difference. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news wherever you are, safely snap it and share it with us using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. All right, look at this video of breaking news a viewer just sent us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. Life moves fast in Metro Atlanta. So does the news. Watch 11 Alive News at 11. You'll get breaking news and you'll get it fast. See It starts with something that is easy to write off, like a school bus bullying incident. But what adults often dismiss as kids just being kids is leading to more suicides. While prevention efforts have decreased suicides among white children, black children are dying at twice the rate. We should warn you, this story does contain graphic descriptions of death by suicide involving children. 11 Alive's Madison Carter has spent months investigating the problem and brings you solutions. I didn't feel as if I had a right to be sad. I didn't feel as if I had a right to not want to be here and to have all these negative emotions because I was living this amazing life, supposedly. And I just didn't feel as if it was validated. And when you don't feel validated, you don't speak up. Paige Gaines decided to die the first time at 12 years old. I go back and look at pictures of myself and you can see it in my eyes. I was sitting there knowing that this was my time and it was my time to go and I was very confident in that decision. I just took pill after pill and I went back into the bedroom. I just laid down, closed my eyes and then the following morning I woke up. What did you feel when you woke up? Sadness and anger. I had the burden of knowing I tried to take my own life. Black children are dying by suicide at rates two times higher than their white peers. If you see that children, regardless of race, regardless of, of culture, if you see that children are dying um, and they're dying from something that is very often preventable, that should be something that alarms all of us. Parents can act now to change the conversation. What I say to parents is don't beat yourself up, right? You're doing the best you can. Do not ask kids, how was your day? Because you're going to get fined. Instead, you change the question, reframe the question. Tell me something good that happened to you today. Tell me something bad that happened to you today. And then what did you think about that thing that happened to you? Keep pounding the table. You know, keep demanding that we put the resources in place and that we fund the resources that allow us to keep our children from dying by suicide. Giving kids support saves lives. We train police officers, we train doctors and things like that in suicide prevention. But if you train the teenager that's sitting next to the teenager that's suicidal, they can recognize those signs. A lot of people are struggling and we keep it to ourselves. but I've recognized that by me being transparent, it saved my life and it's also saving other people's lives. We set up a resource page on 11alive.com slash a different cry, and there you will find information about how to have conversations around the topic and helpful information if someone you know might be struggling. One of the most important resources is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That number 1-800-273-8255. Someone will be there 24 hours a day to answer any questions you may have. Our full series, A Different Cry, is also available on our Roku and Fire TV streaming apps. On Tuesday night, February 1st, we premiere a 30-minute special on all of our streaming apps that starts at 730. We're following breaking news now out of Northeast Atlanta. Police investigating a shooting at an apartment complex on Renaissance Way. Right now, no other details are available. Just stick with 11 Alive on air and online as we give you the very latest. Well, two Atlanta City Council members with unique backgrounds are making history together. Hear their stories next as part of our Voices for Equality series. 
false? Do parents have the right to see their child's medical records? Now you can ask us using the Near Me feature of the 11 Alive News app. Just record your question, send it to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We began with breaking news this and watch on demand. We're tracking severe weather moving through the metro area. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. When it comes to weather, all you want to know is how is it going to affect my day? When you watch 11 Alive Storm Trackers, we focus on the next 24 hours so that you can plan your day. And when it comes to severe weather, we're live instantly, keeping you up to date and keeping your family safe. Accuracy and safety are everything. We want you to be ready for anything. If you haven't watched the 11 Alive Storm Trackers lately, see the difference every day on 11 Alive News. The next time you see severe weather, safely snap it and share it with 11 Alive News using Near Me on the 11 Alive News app. Here's a photo of the storm that a viewer sent to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use Near Me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. It's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. That's what makes 11 Alive News different. We verify, and we're the only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Whether you're heading to... We're taking a look at a history-making moment in our Voices for Equality series. Two Atlanta City Council members have accomplished something that's never been done before in the United States. Here's Joe Ripley tonight on the cultural milestone and what it means for the city of Atlanta. Amir Faroqi's roots could not be closer to Atlanta, and they couldn't be farther from it. I'm the child of, on one hand, an eighth generation Georgian. One side of my family goes back to the 1700s here in Georgia, and then I'm also the the child of an Iranian immigrant who came to the U.S. in the late 1960s. Faroqi's father, a political science professor, planted the seeds of public service and becoming a lifelong learner. Think about uh, folks in need and the least of us and how we can, can help each other be successful. Um, I think it's put a premium on education in my life. In 2017, Faroqi became the first Iranian-American elected official in the South, winning the seat for Atlanta City Council District 2. Georgia is uh, as much a melting pot as my, my parents' relationship reflected, right? I think we have enormous diversity, enormous history uh, from all types of races and ethnic groups. Atlanta City Council continues to make history. In November, Liliana Bakhtiari was elected as City Councilwoman for District 5, making Atlanta City Council the only current city council in America with two Iranian Americans. I was told that I was what was wrong with this country on multiple occasions, that people like people like my family needed to go back to where they came from. It's, it's incredible that my identity finally gets feels validated. And I get to talk about that and I get to talk about my family's history and that legacy and everything that was sacrificed to get me here. Bakhtiari's father immigrated from Iran in the 80s and still a conviction to fight for what she believed in. Don't ever preach to anyone about what they should believe or how they should live their life. You can respectfully disagree. Always listen. Humanity happens when you listen. And he's always taught me that when your friends fall, you help them up. Two city leaders shaped by their heritage, fueled by their desire to move Atlanta forward. I'm here to to connect folks, to humanize issues, and to lay the groundwork for other people like me to follow afterwards. Well, quite a historic moment. That's going to do it for us today on 11 Alive Midday. Thank you for watching us. And remember, stay warm this weekend. Take care. Of the storm that a viewer sent to us. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku.
it's tougher than ever to tell if something on social media is fact or fiction. That's what makes 11 Alive News different. We verify, and we're the only ones in Metro Atlanta doing it. Verify takes stories and claims that have gone viral, sources that information, and then we vet it with the experts. So you can be confident you're getting the facts every time. If you haven't watched Verify, see the difference on the 11 Alive Morning News and at 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the storm.